Hey, what's happening? This is Chef Rick cooking in the kitchen today. Um, today we're going to be talking about Lang uh, griddles with a clamshell piece on top. Uh, currently, Lang makes three different clamshells. Uh, they make a contact clamshell, which means that this piece right here, the clamshell piece, comes all the way down when you have product on the griddle. It touches the top of the product, meaning contact clamshell. This one right here is a radiant clamshell. Radiant comes from radiant heat. Just think about the sun, the sun radiates heat. This is the same thing with this clamshell. Then you have an infrared. Um, infrared technology is a little bit different. Uh, the week before we talked about the CTX with the infrared technology. That clamshell is very similar to that. The, the unique piece about that is the infrared technology goes all the way up to about 1400 degrees. So it doesn't touch the product, but when you're cooking with it, it will smoke a product. This clamshell right here. Uh, about the heat with this clamshell, you're going to get from the top and the base, I have the base set about 350 degrees, 325 degrees, and then if you have the, uh, the radiance uh, piece going at the same time, I've gotten this one up to roughly like 950 degrees, so right now, we we'll shoot it and we're sitting at about 850, 860 right now. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to cook off the bottom and we're going to cook off from the top as well. So cool, let's get started. All right, we use a little olive oil. We're going to cook three different things today. We're going to cook a salmon dish with some wild rice. So we're going to show you the technique of you know searing on this um, and then using the top heat to kind of cook it from the top and the bottom. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to cook a good old Philly cheesesteak today. Um, you know, top sirloin, uh, some pepper, some onions, some mushrooms. We're going to hit it with some provolone cheese and a uh, garlic aioli. And then the last piece of the puzzle, we're going to do some burgers. Um, I know we did burgers on the CTX last week, uh, but I kind of want to do them again. Just kind of do a little bit different burger, but I want to show you the difference in cooking techniques. So this thing, you can feel it's smoking right now. So we're going to do is we put a little oil down. We want to get hot. We're going to do some Phillies to start with. So I've already got all the prep done. So you've got peppers and onions, mushrooms, we've got a top sirloin. It does not take long at all to get this done. Let's get that hot, you can already see right there. We're gonna throw onions and peppers on there. We'll load it up. Mushrooms. We're gonna flatten out a little bit, put a little bit of salt. We're going to close the lid for just a second. So you notice you get a lot of heat coming from this, but you're getting the heat from the top and the bottom. So you'll start knowing it's searing pretty quickly. Uh, the unique couple features about this clam shell is that it has the ignition on it. The ignition control, the ignition control on here um, really is honestly the flip of the switch. Right here, it does not have a power light on it, even though it's a gas unit, so it's automatic, uh, I think it's static, uh, what's what it's actually called. So once you flip it on, Sparks, it goes right on. And we're already, already cooking the fire here. So, we're going to cook it at the fair. So, <laughs> I love the fair. Dude. I love the fair. So, we got that going. I'm going to throw a little more oil right on top of that. You can throw some white wine on there. You know, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. It's that cook. Um, you can either do this in two different designs. Uh, the clamshell can be on a three-inch spacing, which we have right here, or you can go up to a six-inch spacing if you're going to be doing a lot of heavy steaks, thicker product. You can go to a six-inch um, uh, on, on this one. You can do the clamshell only uh, with wine. You can only do it on a 23-inch deep base. They make these in a little bit deeper. Uh, you can go up to 30-inch, which is considered an XL. But you can only do the clamshell on the 23 inch base, deep. You can go from 24 inches all the way up to 72 inches on your griddle if you want to. Uh, but again, you'd have to have a 23 inch deep on your griddle in order to do the clamshells on top. They do come in 12 inch spacing, so you could really only have one clamshell on here, which this is a, a 236, so it's, it's a 36 inch wide and 23 inches deep. You could do um, you know, one clamshell if you want to. Obviously, I have three on here for testing purposes. Just got what it did. It did the Stop flipping shrimp in my hat. Okay. Hibachi. Alright, let's be honest. Alright. So, again, I've got my peppers and onions going. Um, we're going to throw some steak on there. So, sirloin, just cut it up. That's all it is. Again, I'm going to hit it. We'll put a little clarified butter on there for right now. We'll do a steak on there. 
let's see what that salt. This is for Chef Matt down in South Florida. I'm gonna use a little black pepper. Right. Shout out to Chef Matt. Shout out to Chef Matt. So, <laughs> like I said, we've got a filly going. Um, with the with the griddle itself, all lines, all line grills come with a one inch thick base. So if you look down here, you've got a one inch thick base on it. Um, the way they do that, the reason they do that is to retain heat. If you have something a little bit thinner, it's not going to retain the heat as much. The heat's going to evaporate in the atmosphere. So what's going to, what they did was they did a one inch thick, very similar to a Marsal oven where they're doing two inch thick bricks. Um, you want to retain that heat. So your temperatures don't fluctuate so much so you actually get a more of a consistent uh, cook on it. As you can see, Kelsey, you get in here a little bit. This, I mean, the heat's already rock and roll. We're almost there. Um, I could put one in my hat, but uh, <laughs> the thing might be a little messy, but I'm, hey, listen, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to sacrifice. So, obviously, thing. got that. So, what else going? I'm going to start some burgers. As you can see, you know, paying attention, or if you've got these clothes, get some serious curry on it. I like to leave these clothes. Um, the reason is you don't want to retain as much heat as uh, possible in there. Look a little more oil. We're going to start our burger time. We've already got some bread, already got some buns toasted and everything like that. So I'm going to take these buns. This is for my, uh, my Philly. Put a little melted butter on there. See that? Let that cook for just a second. While this is going, obviously hot. You see the smoke coming off, I think. A little salt. A little kosher salt. Sea salt, whatever you guys want. A little black pepper, again, for Matt. Kind of like just an old school bird. For all it is, just two patties, some cheese. I'm going to press it out a little bit at the end. Because this thing is extremely hot, it's going to retain uh, some of the moisture in your burger. It won't get that so dried out. The question is, can you still? Can you still need to flip a product when you have a non-contact flame shell? Yes, you do. You still have to pick, uh, flip the product. However, you can cut down your cooking time in half. So let's say you're using a charcoal grill, um, you know, in your kitchen. You've got I mean, your burger taking about eight minutes. We're going to probably cut the cooking time about four minutes in this one. Now you can see I've got this toaster right here. There you go. Yeah. Let's cut back over there. Take a little clover on the cheese. We'll take some peppers. A little sweet peppers. Put some of those on there. A little bit of that juice so it'll deglaze it and kind of break it up a little bit. Pour it on action. I go for just a second. Well, that's going in that cheese is melting. Garlic aioli. So all I did was roast garlic. Just did a regular convection oven, put in a little aluminum foil, a uh, whole heads of garlic, and then I just smashed the garlic out of it. Um, made a little mayonnaise, and then tossed in, uh, I tossed in a little bit of um, lemon juice. Uh, what it does, just kind of brightens it up a little bit. So the garlic, you'll get a great flavor out of the garlic when it's roasted, slow roasted. Uh, but I like to put just a little bit of lemon juice in there for a trick. I know it's kind of personal, but I, I think it kind of really makes it pop. And just a little bit of salt to kind of bring out the flavors. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, look at that. They're all in there. All right. Oh, rock and roll. The nasty little thing. Woo! Cheesy. All right. Look at that bad boy. There's a Philly right there. Close that lid. Get down with Jesus come out. Hmm. Alright, cool. So now, let's just take some peppers and onions, mushrooms off here, save them for later. We're gonna make some snacks for the kitchen. Alright. So right there. Now we've got our burgers going. And you can see the burgers are already ready to flip. They're shrinking up just a little bit, but we're not using a, uh, losing a lot of moisture with this right here. So nice little sear on there. There we go. I'm going to close the time shell again. 
Let's go and I've got my cheese over here. I've got some buns. Same thing, when I put my buns on the grill, oh, now that I don't need the finger to wait, that would burn. <laughs> I, uh, I put a little butter on there. I just melt the butter. Um, the toast off the buns. There, let that go down. I'm gonna take my buns off to let it rest for a second because I'm gonna press it at the very end. That sandwich is a little sloppy. You're gonna need gloves for that filling, by the way. Okay. You're gonna you probably need it too. <laughs> yeah, that's currently that's fun. I guess. <laughs> um, I'm gonna let that go for just a second, and then we're gonna start cooking the salmon on here. Drain trough. This is your drain trough for the unit right here. So any kind of scrapings, uh, any oil that you have, you're gonna take it from here. I have a, just a little, you know, flat, hard tip spatula right here. I'm just gonna straight down all the unit. I do just like this. You can, have a, you can have a pot next to you with a little bit of olive oil if you want to spray, uh, spread it on there. And then what that will do is it will actually speed up the process of cleaning and make it a little bit easier. Looking we'll good. Put that for just a second. I'm going to put a little, little cheddar cheese on both these bad boys. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this down for a second. So, as you can see, this thing is... So this thing is extremely fast. Put the buns. Right there. We'll try the cheese action on here. Come on all the way. We're gonna double deck with this bad boy. So leave it on there. Honestly, you guys have seen that I flipped it once, but I went from almost an eight to 10 minute cook time on a burger. Uh, these are probably a little over a third of a pound, um, and I'm, I'm going down to less than like right around four minutes. I mean, I've, like I said, I've got this thing cranking up here. We're sitting at probably, we're cooking from about 350 degrees on the bottom, which I have it set at, and then I have it coming down to about 900 degrees on top. You also notice down here is where my set temperature, where I can set my temperature is. I can go as low as 200 degrees. I can go as high as 450 degrees on this thing. Cheese is already melted. One burger. Yep. Yeah, we're going double it. We're going double it today. All right. I'm going to smash it down a little bit. You can see if you get close here, Kelsey, you can see you've got a little bit of the juice that's coming out right here. It's because it's it's searing at such a high temperature that it's retaining that moisture in the burger. All right. All I do is just take my flat spatula, put all my onions down here. Let that go. So again, if you're putting product on, taking product off, get the clam shells down. Again, I don't have to worry about my heat retention on here because it's so fast. 900, we're sitting and we're pegging at 900 right now. You can see, you can see the heat coils through there. And that's, it's running it right now. So what we're gonna do now, now we're gonna do our salmon dish. Uh, we've got a little sockeye salmon. Uh, it's slightly milder than uh, King salmon or anything like that. I particularly like it. Um, it's, it's, you can put a wood plank if you want to with the house. It cooks fairly quick. It seems to be a little more delicate to me. So we're gonna put just a little salt on top. No pepper, just salt. So now that bad boy's rock and rolling. So one thing, one little trick is too, I score the bottom a little bit um, on my salmon once the scales are off and everything like that. I put a little score in the bottom of it. The reason is, and so when you're cooking salmon, um, it helps from the skin to flex out as much. So what I, what I mean by that is sometimes you can get it to roll, your salmon will roll a little bit. This will actually keep it, hopefully it'll keep it down. Um, it'll keep it uh, break down at the bottom of the grill. Well, that's going. It gets hotter and hotter as well when I talk to turn on and put on. Hmm. Crank this one up. Now, I'm going to cook off two different sides on this one. So before, I was cooking off, kind of doing, you know, burger, and I was doing the filling on one side, but now I want to caramelize the squash for this dish. So I could I could use it on the same clamshell. I'm just going to use it on this one because I want that salmon to stay hot and cook all the way. I'm going to put some squash down. It is getting summer, so you're going to start seeing more squash, zucchini, tomatoes. Um, all that good stuff going on right now. I have cooked off a contact clamshell before. 
Um, the times are going to be slightly quicker on a clamshell that's contact. So if I'm touching the top of my salmon, uh, it's going to cook just a little bit faster. But again, you know, I don't necessarily need all that. I don't need that rapid pace right now. If I'm going to cook salmon in four minutes, and burgers in four minutes, quite frankly, I'm, I keep my ticket times under 10 minutes. You can do fast casual. You can do anything like that if you want to right now. So when you're talking about that rapid recovery, that fast paced kitchen, this is good for you. Again, similar, you know, there's similar cooking styles than we were cooking on the CTX, you know, as far as heat goes from the top to the bottom. Um, obviously, not automated, automated. Keep that cooking. This thing, I mean, you're already starting to get that brown, that brown hue to it on top. Uh, flip grab. That is little. Um, trick to tell if salmon's done. I've got chopsticks. Um, you don't have that metal chopsticks. You can have a skewer, it doesn't really matter. But a trick to tell if salmon's done is if you push this chopstick through, alright? It doesn't give you any give going all the way through. It's nice and smooth. Salmon's done in perfection. If it still gives a little bit of give, you're probably looking at that a little bit under mid rare. Um, I like to get my salmon to go to medium and mid-rare. So what we're going to do is, I've got some kale cut up. I've already got some wild rice made up. I'm a big fan of wild rice. Uh, it's super hearty. Um, it gives me a lot of energy. But I need that. We'll put a little bit in there. Okay. Vegetables. So I'm putting nice caramelization on there. So the caramelization is going to help the sugars uh, develop a little bit faster, so a little bit less moisture will come out. Uh, the vegetables stay a little bit more firm. We're going. So now, the salmon's almost there. When I tested it, it gave me a little bit of give coming through. So what I'm going to do is be very careful with this. So this is, I did a little teriyaki glaze. Something super simple, a couple ingredients, no big deal. I just want to get a little bit more flavor going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the teriyaki glaze on there. And then I'm going to let it. I'm going to put the. I'm going to put the infrared uh, radiant heat. Excuse me. The radiant pads down just for a second because I don't want it to burn. Okay. Because it will burn quick. Kale, a wild rice. Um, if you don't want wild rice, you can do lentils in there. Uh, you know, beans if you want to. Um, with any kind of a good, it doesn't really matter. Now, vegetables are done. If you get into a situation where you're having a hard time scraping them, grab yourself two spatulas, put them together, put it down like that, and it again. Now, salmon. Okay, salmon's almost there. You can start to see it bubbling just a little bit. Give it just one more minute. I'm going to grab a set of tongs real quick. And all I did was, like I said, I've got my rice, squash, tomatoes. Put well, anything you want in this thing. I'm just showing you a little bit of an example of what you can do. Got a little Asian dressing, a little rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, um, hoisin sauce in there, whole grain mustard for us. Yeah, these things are super easy to make. That in there. There we go. You can start seeing the top of the sand is bubbling pretty good. Look how easy that was to take off. That heat is so hot that it's just taking that, I've got the skin on it. Put it right on top. You can take my other piece of sand. You know, fish and pour it literally, figuratively. Have that boy right there. So you didn't cook it on four sides? Hey, George Van Riper, I did not cook this on four sides because I've got the clamshell. Now, if you're at home, you want to rock this thing on four sides, be my guest. But for right now, we're not cooking on four sides. I'm going to throw a little toasted sesame seeds on there. You know, we've got some different different options that we just did with the clamshell. We did a Philly, which is super messy. Uh, we did a smash burger, kind of old school style uh, that you find at diner. And then we did kind of like, a, you know, a little bit more of a modern technique uh, on an item. Uh, something that's kind of going going hot in the market right now as far as the goons go. Uh, something a little bit uh, simpler. Something else about the clamshell that I want to I want to touch on. Obviously, it's down, it's on. Take it up, it's going to turn itself off. 
it's either it's either off or on, but when it's up, it's on a standby mode. Right? Meaning that it's not in use. You can cook just off the griddle if you want to. If you don't need that top heat, you can absolutely use it. So if you're cooking eggs on here, you're cooking bacon, uh, hash browns, you maybe want to have it down. But if you're cooking those simple items for breakfast, absolutely have this uh, have this up for just a little bit. Also, too, you've got three different cooking zones in here. So, cool thing is, let's say you're transitioning from breakfast to lunch. I can still have this down if I'm cooking my eggs, I'm cooking my bacon. I want to have this down at 250 degrees, but now I've got to start to get burgers rolling in. I've got my fillies coming in or whatever it is you want. Have these two. So, you have three independent cooking zones, 12 inch here, 12 inch here, 12 inch here. I can have these two at 350 and I can still do my breakfast orders. It's greater for a hotel. I worked in a hotel years ago. Uh, I did a free meal plus overnight. So you're cooking, you can be doing you know, breakfast up until 11 o'clock and all of a sudden lunch starts rolling in, all of a sudden dinner starts rolling in, and then you go to overnight. Well, overnight, what does everybody want now? They want breakfast again. So you can easily manipulate this product uh, to fit any kind of needs in your kitchen. Again, it goes from uh, 30, you can do 36 inches, 24 inches, all the way out to 72 inches. Add your clamshells, just remember, if you want to go deeper, don't wait on the clamshells. Keep it around 23 inches, and you can do the clamshells the three different kinds. You've got the contact clamshell, which touches the product. You've got the radiant heat, which we're using right now. And then you have the infrared. The infrared, again, goes up to 1,400 degrees. So it's like you're cooking an infrared broiler um, that you would see at Steakhouse. So if you want to use this and get that Steakhouse effect, absolutely, man, throw that infrared technology on there and let it rip. Hey, this is Chef Rick. I appreciate you joining me today in the kitchen. And if you have any questions, concerns, please reach out. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.